Good evening. My name is Janet Bernardo. It is, um, I'm the Conservation Commission Chair. Tonight we are meeting for the Needham Conservation Commission. It is May 25th, 2023, 7 o'clock p.m. Um, first, I'd like to go through the members and make sure everybody can hear me. Allison. Here. Paulina. Here. Dave. Here. Sue. Here. And staff, Clay. Here. And Deb. Here. And do we know if um, we're expecting Steve and Peter or no? I haven't heard from either of them, so. Okay, so they might appear, so. Let me um, okay, this is an open meeting of the Town of Needham Conservation Commission being conducted remotely, consistent with Governor Baker's executive order. All supporting materials have been provided to members of this board and are available on the Conservation Commission website. The public is encouraged to follow along using the posted agenda unless the chair notes otherwise. We are now turning to the first item on the agenda. Before we do so, permit me to cover some ground rules for effective and clear conduct of our business and to ensure accurate meeting minutes. I will introduce each hearing on the agenda. I will introduce the applicant and or their consultant to begin their project presentation. After they conclude their presentation, I will go down the line of members, inviting each by name to provide any comment or questions. Please hold until your name is called. Further, please remember to mute your phone or computer when you are not speaking. Please remember to speak clearly and in a way that helps generate accurate minutes. For any reason, please, for any response, please wait until the chair yields the floor to you and please state your name before speaking. Finally, each vote taken in this meeting will be conducted by a roll call vote. Um, we did do a vote. Deb, did everybody contribute to the vote? Or I did waiting? not hear from Stephen. Okay. Do you want to say what the... So the, as far the, as the state... Is he a tying vote or anything? Huh? Is he a tying vote? No. Wait, okay. No. So we had um, two that wanted to go back in person and four that wanted to stay remote. So sorry for the two people that wanted to go back in person. We're going to stay remote. So I'm guessing that that was you. But yeah, sorry about I that. want to continue. I see no reason to be remote. I know it's. I just it's, don't it is nice when we're all together. It just happens to be convenient when we're remote. I think that's kind of convenience is winning out, of, unfortunately. Um, sorry. So that's that. Maybe we can take another vote in a few months and see if people are ready after the end of the summer or something. We'll try. <laughs> you look so disappointed. Are you trying me? Yeah, I'm talking to you. Yeah, yeah you no, I, 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 I'm not sure if I want to continue it on a remote basis. Okay, well, well, we can think about that. Yeah, you can think about that. Okay. Um, meeting minutes. We don't have any yet, but we hopefully will soon. Any enforcement or violation updates? No. Okay. So the first hearing on the agenda is thirty. Seven Mosley Avenue, DP file number 234896. This is a continued notice of intent. The applicant has requested a continuance to the June 8th, 2023 meeting. Um, just for the commission's uh, knowledge, um, I've asked the applicant to sit down with me to go through some of the calculations because I couldn't follow their logic. Um, so we're going to have a meeting next week. Anybody's interested in joining? We don't have more than three people there. You're more than welcome. Um, we're meeting on Tuesday in Deb's office at five o'clock. So, but we just can't have more than three staff commission members. Um, okay, so next is 36 Elder Road, DP file number 234899. This De is the uh, Janet, before we continue, um... Do we, I think we just need a motion to continue the Mosley. Oh, sorry. Yes, thank you. Um, can I have a motion to continue 37 Mosley Avenue till June 8th? Motion to continue. I have a second. Second. All in favor? Allison. Aye. Helena. 
Aye. Dave. Aye. Sue. Aye. Yeah, aye. Great, thank you very much. All right, thanks, Clay. All right, 36 Elder Road, DP file number 234899. This is a continued notice of intent. Um, is there anybody here to talk about this or did we already talk about it and we were just waiting for some new plans? Um, that's correct. We are not expecting anybody to, to come. Uh, I can share the revised plans. Um, And the, this was, and you're satisfied, Clay, that they're now meeting the riverfront standards and because there was that 10% discussion, correct? Yes. Uh, I think at the last meeting, we asked them to pull their mitigation forward uh, about yeah. three feet. And um, they reported that when they pulled the line all the way up to the where the proposed shed was, they actually gained three and a half feet forward. Perfect. So their new area is 938. Okay. And then they have the original planting plan that'll um, include the two trees for the removals, as well as uh, 12 shrubs. So it more than makes up for the two to one ratio. And then they have herbaceous plugs. That they'll plug into this area as well as um, creating that fence barrier with the, the placards. Perfect. So do we need any more information from them? No, I assume nope. not. Um, so are we ready to close this hearing? Is there anybody in the audience or any commission members? Like, okay, commission members first. <laughs> I'm trying to go faster on this meeting. Um, Allison, any comment? No, no comment. Paulina? Dave? No. Sue? No. Is there anybody in the audience that is here for 36 Elder Road? I see no raised hands. Okay, can I have a motion to close the hearing if we need no more information? Motion to close. I second. Second. All in favor? Allison? Aye. Paulina? Aye. Dave? Aye. Sue? Aye. Janet? Aye. Okay, that's closed and we can discuss uh, the order at the end of the tonight's all um, Just a quick question. What were you saying about Tuesday night? Um, I have asked the applicant for 37 Mosley Avenue to discuss the calculations that they provided because I couldn't follow them. So we're gonna meet in Deb's office on Tuesday at five o'clock. So if any commission members wanna be there, we just can't have more than three members. Um, so let Deb know or Clay know that you um, would like to attend. Um, okay, 34 Meadowbrook Road, DP file number 234906 is a continued notice of intent. And I believe I saw Susan MacArthur is here. <laughs> it's like, I'm like looking at you around the corner of my monitor. I'm almost got it figured out. You just happen to not be on the other side. Um, and do you, is, is the applicant also here, Brett? Yes. Yeah, I'm here. You can hear us. Okay, great. All right. Ready? You ready to have a presentation? Yes. Um, thank you. Uh, again, my name is Susan MacArthur from MacArthur Environmental Consulting here with Brett Reese, the, um, property owner at 34 Meadowbrook. And last time we came before you, um, the commission wanted us to follow up on a few things, um, and I can just go through those um, re real quick. Uh, so we now do have a file number. Um, the check was, I don't know. Anyway, um, that's all set. Um, and then uh, the commission had asked about the stormwater bylaw, um, if we uh, needed to comply with that. And um, we, the proposed addition, uh, not including the proposed deck is, approximately 325 square feet. Um, the building footprint is about 2,035 square feet. So the proposed addition is less than 25% of the existing building footprint. It's only 16%. So, uh, so we aren't subject to that. However, we are just on, a, as a side note, we're proposing a drywall. Um, Great. Yeah. And then, um, 
lastly, the commission had uh, questioned if the project complies with the riverfront um, area regulations, specifically uh, the compliance with um, uh, five, sorry, I can't even read my, uh, 5E, which is a re redevelopment project. Um, and Sorry, that's a C, <laughs> five C. Um, the area, um, shall not exceed the amount of degraded area provided that the proposed work um, may alter up to 10% of the degraded area. Um, and so the lot size is 31,937 square feet. Um, of that approximately um, 3,005 square feet of it is degraded. That includes the house, the front walkway, the driveway, um, you know, areas covered and impervious. And um, so that equates to less than 10%. Uh, it's like 9.4% of degraded on the site currently. Um, so the proposed project, the new addition, um, will lie in previously developed areas like lawn and, um, and areas of existing deck. So that's where it's proposed. Um, so that the addition is 325 square feet of new impervious on the lot. Um, so I didn't count the deck, you know, it's just the, the I didn't count the proposed deck. Anyway, um, the river flows through the lot. So the entire lot within riverfront area um, is about 29,897 square feet. So I just took out the river part, you know, and then the sides are riverfront. Um, and the addition, as I said, is 325 square feet of new impervious surface, which equates to about 1.1% of new degraded area being proposed within Riverfront, uh, which is less than 10% of the degraded area on the river of Riverfront on a lot. So the way I read this, it says you can go up to 10%. So if you have less than 10%, you can add a little bit more to get, you know, you can add whatever it is to get to 10%. So I guess I'm not following your, your logic because it sounds like the addition brings you to 10.4% if you use your initial 31,937 square feet. With you use just the river, you take out the river, then your your existing property is already at ten percent. So then you can't do anything because then that brings you to eleven point one percent. So if you're, you then have to mitigate for the additional square footage. That's the percentage that you've increased it by. See, Are you showing any mitigation? Okay, uh, no, because that isn't how. I don't think that's interpreted. Um, no offense. Uh, maybe I'm wrong, but I, I think well, that's what the project just in front of you. We just had that very long project that was in front of yeah, you. Yeah, and Clay and I just Elder did a, a webinar on this, and it's so a total I thought of ten percent new impervious. No, it's added to the existing. Correct. You're yeah. only allowed to go up to ten percent total. Yeah, but you don't really want to take the river out because that doesn't help you. You want to keep the river right in there. Okay. Um, but I mean, that, we, we've we had like, there's been a number and basically you may have missed the fact that we um, DP appealed one of our projects, one of our riverfront projects because we didn't do the calculation correctly. So now we're being extra careful because we got in trouble. So the last project, the Elder Road project, had to come back multiple times until they got their 10%. So um, we need you to mitigate for the additional percentage over your 10%. And I think you, you do that by square footage. Is that is it one to one, two to one, something like that is a regulation. Either I, I Deb or Clay, you want to jump in? Yeah, I believe for over the 10%, it's two to one where you're not restoring currently degraded areas. So if you're removing 
impervious surfaces, paved surfaces as, as part of your mitigation, that can go one to one if it's being restored. Otherwise, it's two to one. Um, I think when I was looking at the calculations uh, just before the meeting, uh, it looks like the project is about 136 square feet over that 10%. So restoration of 272 square feet is what we'd be looking for. And whether the commission um, bears any weight, it seems that with stormwater going in where it's not required, um, that can, it, it's not included to the calculations, but for smaller impacts, it can be considered for part of um, the improvement of the site. I was looking for the the language that was forwarded to us so that the commission may have a little bit of leeway but it's still about 272 square feet of restoration that that would be being looked for or sought after is that with the 31,937 or is it with the 29,897 square feet i did that with the 31 937. Okay. And um, Clay, do you have any sense of how much square footage they can take credit for the infiltration chambers? Um, it, it seems that when we were uh, in the workshop um, for the riverfront standards, it, it often comes down to how the commission feels about it, I guess, what, what the commission's best judgment is, because they are the issuing authority and the DEP will step in if, if you know, there's something egregious or there's something that, that catches them. So it's tough because they didn't really give a lot of guidelines for how much to calculate or, or what, you know, what, how to quantify the, the stormwater units, there's some DEP members that seem to think that stormwater is not a replacement for mitigation. And there seems to be some DEP members that feel that that stormwater can can be a net benefit where the where the square footage is not substantial, I think was the, the term used. Um, so in a case like this, where you're looking for less than 300 square feet, it, it depends on if the commission feels like they need the full 272 if the stormwater is being added, especially since the stormwater is not required in this case by the, the bylaw or by the, the state regulations. Um, so is where, how far back does the lawn go? You want to pull up a plan? Some Anybody want to pull up a plan? Yep. Wait, does the lawn go all the way to the wall or does the lawn go to a fence? The lawn goes to um, basically to the river, right, Brett? Yeah, it goes goes right up to the to the brook. And there's there's a fence in between the brook and the yeah. Is there a fence? So would is there um, an opportunity to allow vegetation to grow back between the fence and the river? Um. I mean, there's a lot of plants already. Um, if I recall, Brett, you can jump in there. Um, yeah, I mean, we've we've got a lot of plantings uh, kind of around the fence there and a lot of Pachysandra. Um, so between the fence and the river, so you, it's not lawn that you're mowing? Um, I mean, it's about like five feet between the fence and the, and the brook. Um, and so it's not really even possible to get a lawnmower back there. Uh, I'd say it's just natural growth. Um, okay, so that's not act. So I'm thinking, you know, it's lawn. It's lawn that we want to vegetation, Pakistandra, that counts as um, not lawn. <laughs> like, right? I mean, does that make sense to others? Um, because it can hold back. You know, it help hold rain and it holds sediment and does a lot of actually some good things. Um, is there any lawn between the fence and the river yeah. wall? Because just looking at it, it's 486 square feet approximately. I mean, I did it pretty quick and dirty. Um, between what you have is the fence 
I'm, I'm not doing anything to maintain anything on the other side of the fence. Right. And now there's a shed back there. Is there any lawn? We're trying no. to get rid of lawn. Natural growth, whatever, it's whatever's growing. In natural. There. There's uh, some trees. Um, there. Around the shed. Is around the shed. Any of that? Is, is there a clearing? If, if I recall, isn't there a bit of a clearing on the opposite side of the the river? Yeah. Yeah, there's a clearer area there. I mean, it, it seems like there, there is, it's not shown here and I, I don't think it's grass lawn, but it, it's certainly something that that I think was historically just kind of maintained from from woody vegetation for, you know, a portion that that could probably receive some plantings as well. Yeah, ba basically when the when they re, uh, redid the brook a couple of years ago, they kind of cleared, cleared everything out in there, um, but it's, it's all natural and could take plants. So you don't mow back there. You don't mow on the other side of the river. Uh, I mean, every now and then, just like cutting a couple spots. But I mean, it's 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 just natural area and could certainly take plantings. So you just can't plant within, like you can't plant anything large within the fifty foot sewer and drain easement because the town needs to keep that clear enough. Um, so do you, do you have a thought, Susan, on what could work? I mean, you all, if you only have to come up to less than 300 square feet, it, it seems like there could be something on the other side that would make it happen. I mean, yeah. Brett, do you mow on the other side? Um, I push mower every now and then just to clear out a couple, like just a pathway to be able to kind of walk through here and there. I mean, it, could um would you be amenable and the commission i guess to naturalize you know let it go if you will um or or let a portion of that triangular area um yeah yeah i mean i mean <laughs> i don't want to make it sound like it's uh uh you it's know. not a beautiful lawn back there. It yeah, doesn't, it's, doesn't it's, sound it's like a it's pretty, like, pretty wild area back there. I mean, yeah, but if it, if maybe we could muddy. put in, um, a few... I don't know if that would count, Janet. Oh, it doesn't count. You have to take well, that down. because the one that they appealed was because they were trying to add vegetation in an area that already had vegetation, and they said that you had to take away lawn and yeah. restore that. Wasn't that just a suggestion? I mean, it wasn't like no the only no. thing they could do. Well, for for mitigation, um, you can't take credit for putting vegetation where there already is vegetation. It was taking away lawn and and restoring or mitigating that area. Did they well, talk about invasive species? Like, are there invasive species back in that so-called vegetated area? Um, I don't recall seeing any, but that doesn't mean they're, you know, I didn't walk around back there too much, but. On Google Earth, it looks pretty um, thick. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, We'd like you to come up with a plan to provide us with the, the 272 square feet of mitigation. Um, you can look around and think about what you what makes the most sense. And if there are invasive species, as Allison said, that is one way to um, provide your your mitigation. Does that make sense? And again, there's no game. Um, commission members, you have any other comments? Allison? No comment. Dave? Uh, the only comment I have is uh, relative to the uh, dry well. I didn't see any uh, soils data. So I would suggest that before that is installed, that um, there's some verification that the soil is suitable. Or dry well. We can 
Um, I think we can condition that. Condition yeah. it, I guess, because when they go to install it, they'll be testing the soils. Yeah, yeah. just to make sure, because I don't think you want to put something in if the soils aren't suitable. Right. right. And then the, the, uh, the uh, erosion control sock, I guess you call it, mm -hmm. that, that should be 12 inches. It wasn't noted on the drawing. Okay. And involved down three to four three pointers. Uh, anything else, Dave? Nope, that's it. Sue? No comment. Paulina? No questions. Okay, so a 12 inch silt sock, per, uh, soil test um, by uh, a soil evaluator before installation of the dry well. Um, are we relatively confident that you're going to be above groundwater because you have a pretty good slope in the back there? Um, the soils data, I, it's somewhere in here. It, it says that it's well-drained soils um, in that area. You know, not that it's been tested, but uh, NRCS. Um, and, and, you're, and there's a slope in the back. So between the house and the and the brook, where it's groundwater is probably in the brook. You have a good slope, so you're not going to hit groundwater, is my question, statement, concern. Uh, yeah, I, I don't think so. I mean, I think they're they're in pretty good shape. It looks like the where you have the dry well, it's around con elevation 96, and the brook is 92. The wall is like 92. So you have four feet between the surface and the wall. So your groundwater is probably below the wall. Yeah, it's um, mapped as Merrimack Urban Land Complex. Um, these are excessively drained soils with depth to water table typically in excess of 80 inches. Good. Yeah. So uh, we'll condition having a test bit there. And if you can, um, provide us with a plan that shows us the 272 square feet of um, mitigation for the riverfront, that would be great. Okay. Do you want to continue this so you can provide us with that plan? Uh, Brett, are you willing to continue this? And yeah. Our next meeting is June 8th. So it will be a very quick meeting. The, yeah. I assume the plan will be set. And um, do you yeah. need a detailed planting plan? i um, like a no. We we just need you. Well, what do we need, Deborah Clay? You want to tell say what we need so I don't say the wrong thing. Probably need a um a planting plan with a, at minimum uh either planting suggested types like a planting schedule. Um, I know some things can be hard to find at nurseries, so having a, a list to go off of is usually helpful. And then um, like a planting density, you know, a, if you're filling a certain area saying so many of these spread out this far, just just something that that's enough for contractors or, you know, a landscaper to be able to, to put together and monitor. Okay. And then just shade in on the, on the plan, we can just, where we're gonna do that. Yeah. Okay. Okay, we're, we're good. Um, great, okay. So um, can I have a motion to, can, do, oh, anybody in the, um, any commission members have anything else to add? I think I went through you all. Anybody in the audience have anything to add? There are no raised hands. So can I have a motion to continue 34 Meadowbrook till um, June 8th. So moved. Second. A second. Pauline, you're second. Thank you. Um, all in favor, Allison. Aye. Dave. Aye. Sue. Aye. Paulina. Jenna, aye. Great, thank you very much. Thank uh, you. We'll see you in two weeks. Okay, bye. Bye. Okay, next is 4650-6294 Heather Lane, MWRA Siphon Structure Project. The applicant has requested a continuance to the June 8th meeting. Um, 
There's no more follow up, right? We just need a motion to continue. Um, can I have a motion to continue? Do they not have a DP file number yet either? They do have a file number. Um, we had asked them to talk to um, the homeowners about yeah. uh, plantings and they just haven't heard have from them yet. So okay. that's why it they just, want to continue. It just doesn't have a file number on this agenda. Um, uh, so yeah, they have one. Um, I have a motion to continue 46, 50, 62, 94, Heather Lane for MWA siphon. Motion to continue. Second. Second. All in favor? Allison. Dave. Aye. Two. Aye. Paulina. Yeah. Aye. Great. Thank you very much. Okay. Now we're up to 920 South Street. So there's lot one and there's lot two. So 920 South Street, lot one is DP file number 234905. This is a notice of intent. Do we want to take both of these at the same time or do we want to separate them? Um, I guess you could probably, I don't know. You could probably take them at the same time, I would imagine. Does the applicant have an opinion? I think, yeah, that makes sense to me. Our um, so the 920 South Street lot two, DP phone number 234904 is also here with a notice of intent. Um, and we do have a number of letters to read in. Should we do that before or after their presentation? Um, perhaps before, and then maybe they could um, speak to them during their presentation. Okay. Um, Anybody on the commission want to read these letters in or you're going to let me do that. <laughs> okay. All righty. Um, so, and for the record, just to make sure that we've heard who is available. Arthur Allen. Here. You can hear us. Um, you are the consultant and Brian Funnington. Yep, here. Did I get that right? Um, and yep. you can hear us too. Great. Okay, so this was received uh, today, May 25th. Conservation Commission members and staff, we received this morning the proposed conservation plan submitted for 920 South Street. We live at 914 South Street, need a mass 02492, directly adjacent to the proposed new development and have a material interest in these plans. Our comments are as follows. One, I have had numerous conversations with Brian Connaughton and in general support his desire to develop the property. At the same time, we have strongly emphasized to him that we believe it is important to keep the mature trees that are near our property line in order for both of us to have as much privacy and green space as possible. From this submission, it does not appear he has honored our request. Virtually all of the mature trees running from the water catchment area up along the sewer easement and then across lot one along the property line are being destroyed. It would be relatively easy to move part of the sewer line easement in five to 10 feet to ensure that many of these mature trees are kept. Number two, we do not agree with the proposal to destroy all the trees marked in the green areas for several additional reasons. Clearing the green area, which includes part of the water catchment area for lot two, will provide an unobstructed view all the way across his property from ours to the homes on Marant Drive. We are concerned that this amount of clearing on hillsides could cause significant problems for water runoff and erosion. The grading plan is part of the problem as trees are being sacrificed when perhaps several stone walls rather than steep hills might be considered. The proposed green areas in lot one also have a number of mature trees. They are in the 100 foot buffer area. They provide soil stability on a hillside that has had erosion in the past. In heavy rainstorms, we have, ha we have a considerable amount of surface water that runs down the hillside and across our driveway into the wetlands. Groundwater often continues to seep across the driveway after a sustained amount of rain for several days. We do not believe the groundwater study is correct giving, given our experience of the water flows during heavy rainstorms. Number three, there appear to be some discrepancies in the plans. In the plans for the zoning approval, there was a 
barn included adjacent to the house in lot two. It is not in these plans. We make mention of it for three reasons. Perhaps the underlying reason for why the storm drain and sewer easement is pushed so closely to the property line. The visual impact of having mature trees being destroyed that could partially block the view of a barn like structure and concerns about soil stability and erosion in the hillside where we have a root cellar. Number four, there was a very mature 100 year plus Katsura tree. Did I say that right, Allison? Katsura? Yeah, Katsura. Katsura tree uh, with a very long name after it. That is not marked in the drawing that is very close to the proposed new home on lot two. This is a beautiful specimen and we would encourage having it be saved. Our property and the homes on Merritt Drive were originally part of the same property as 920 South Street, and then the land was subdivided. The original owners of the property sprinkled unique trees, and we have some of them on our lot as well. Number five, it might be helpful to have a more specific drawing showing what trees are being planned to be kept in lot one and lot two in an inventory of what they are. They have number five, but it should be number six. There were no plans submitted for the land running from the sewer line in lot two to the Charles River. What does that mean? We appreciate the opportunity to provide our comments. Sincerely, Bob and Erna Place. Okay, and then we have another letter that was received via email from Dr. Serge Aliv. Um, Notice of intents for 920 South Street. Dear commission members, I reside at 31 Merritt Drive and I am writing to you as an abutter to the property that is subject of these notices of intent. I have the feeling, I have the following comments about these applications. According to the applications, work will involve the clearing of 11,518 square feet of outer buffer zone. The applica applications state that the outer buffer zone areas to be altered are presently vegetated with a combination of woody native and woody non-native invasive species. These areas are proposed to be cleared in order to facilitate the development of the lots. Under bylaw section 1.05 parentheses 4 parentheses A, where alterations are proposed to buffer zone dominated by trees, shrubs, or natural hibiscus vegetation, wildlife habitat assessments are required and the proposed work will alter the lesser of greater than 5,000 square feet or 10% of the buffer zone within the property. It also states that wildlife habitat assessments must be prepared in accordance with the current policies of the Massachusetts Department of Environmental Protection and or the Commission's Wildlife Habitat Assessment Policy. The Commission's Wildlife Habitat Assessment Policy states that a wildlife habitat assessment shall include the following shall include the information listed on pages two and three of the policy. I have reviewed the buffer zone wildlife habitat assessments included in the applications. I have not found information that addresses, number one, wildlife habitat features, tree cavities, fallen logs, dead perch trees, in parentheses. Number two, location of buffer zone with respect to potential wildlife corridors to other wetlands. And number three, a list of wildlife species that are capable of using the resource area for nesting, breeding, overwintering, or for migrating or feeding habitat. Also, other than a payment of $400 for tree removal, the applications do not include a description of measures to mitigate for impacts to wildlife habitat within the buffer zone. I request that the commission ensure that the requirements of your policy are fully met and that appropriate conditions for evaluation and mitigation are applied. Thank you. Serge Ali. Okay, how was that? Um, so now if you'd like to do your presentation and do you have a plan or anything you'd like to pull up? Sure, yeah, I'd like to share screen. This is Arthur Allen from Ecotech, Project Wetland Scientist. Can everybody see that? Yes. So this is the existing conditions plan. Again, I'm Arthur Allen, a wetland scientist from Ecotech Incorporated. Um, I did the wetland delineation on the site and prepared the notices of intent for the two lot subdivision, lot one and two subdivision of 920 South Street. So again, the existing conditions plan, uh, there was a, a large house in the cent no, uh, sorry, north central part of the site 
that house uh, was completely outside of the buffer. That house has been removed. Um, I walked the site today with Deb and uh, we reviewed that area, saw that there's just a cellar hole now and some of the old uh, uh, retaining walls. Um, the wetlands on the site um, are the, uh, the wetland across the driveway to 914 to the east. Um, again, that wetland's fully on 914. It's associated with a perennial stream that's actually on the further lot to the east that's a little more than 200 feet away from this property. Um, but the buffer zone from the, that wetland off property encroaches into what's uh, proposed as lot one. Um, uh, as, as noted by Deb, uh, we did not put flags on the 914 property. That wetland was located by myself with a, with a survey rod with the surveyor located and his instruments located on 920. And he shot those points as I locate, as I placed the rod on those points. Um, so there are no actual flags. The edge of the wetland there is uh, well-defined. It's actually, again, across the driveway on the other side of a retaining wall at the Toa slope. Um, Deb mentioned that Potentially, the commission would want flags installed over there. Um, if we were to be able to do that, we'd need to approach um, the folks at 914 and get permission to place flags on their property. But I guess that would be at the at the commission's uh, discretion as to whether um, we need to do that or not. But that's that's how those wetlands were located over there. I just want to bring up, so if we're going to be approving these wetland resources, that we're going to be approving them on the abutters property, and, you know, those will be approved resources on their property. Yeah, um, I was thinking that, too, that I, I don't know that, I, I guess I would kind of like to get the buy-in from the butter from the property owner, the 914 property owner. Um, Since they'll be stuck with whatever our decision yeah, is. Yes, because they'll be stuck with whatever years, our so. decision is. Right. So, I mean, te technically, we we didn't apply for anything on 914. So I, I believe you cannot, I believe you cannot approve offsite wetlands unless right. they're part of the order of conditions. So, um, yeah, yeah. I, I think that we don't want to approve wetlands that are on somebody else's property unless they um, are saying that they want us to. Yeah. So I think we should. We I, should would, I would try to have a conversation with them and just yeah. see what their feelings are if you haven't already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they, again, the applicants on the on the Zoom tonight, Brian Connaughton, and, and we can have that discussion afterwards in terms of, you know, approaching that be a butter and get back to the commission. Obviously, we're not going to close this hearing tonight. There's going to be some outstanding issues. So, so we can follow up on that. Um, the other wetland on the property is, uh, is the wetland B in the south end of the property. And that's a, that's a bordering vegetated wetland that is in between the development and the Charles River. The Charles River is all the way at the south end of the property. Um, the mean annual high, I did flag the mean annual high water line. The, the riverfront, the Tuna Front Riverfront stops actually to the south of Wetland B. So nowhere near anything that we're proposing um, associated with this development. Um, but, but again, Wetland B was flagged and that Wetland B pro projects a buffer um, up into lot two. Um, so I believe that's it for the rear, for the uh, the wetland areas. I'm sorry, uh, is there a property line on this plan that I'm looking at? Like when you said lot one and lot two, I'm not seeing Oh no, this is, just, this is just existing conditions. Okay. This is, this is pre-subdivision. I'll move, I'll move into the other plans as we go along. I just wanted to explain to you 
um, existing conditions. Mm -hmm. So, and, and also we do have DEP file numbers as noted uh, for both lots with no comments from DEP. We also, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, um, Brian, I believe we have planning board approval for both. That's lots correct. At this point. Okay. Yep. So we'll move into uh, the next plan. Uh, one of the abutters referred to this plan as the green areas. So this is a this is a plan um, depicting the portions of the buffer zones to be cleared for the development. Um, so this uh, buffer up again ad adjacent to lot uh, to 914 on lot one. Uh, these are the two portions of the outer buffer zone uh, that will be cleared for lot one. And then uh, down um, wetland B, the outer buffer zone um, to be cleared is in this area. And again, these are the uh, these are strictly the 50 to 100 foot buffers. We're not proposing any work within the, the 50 foot buffers. Um, and let's see, yeah, we have a little over 11,000 square feet of total um, buffer zone alteration for the project. This plan um, does show the lot lines, does not show the proposed development, but it shows the layout of the, the cul-de-sac that's being created to, to provide frontage. And then the lot lines um, basically run around for lot one, runs around the cul-de-sac and then out the drain easement to the east and the rest of the, the property is on lot two. So we'll move Is there an existing to... sewer or something that you're connecting to? Yeah. Co correct. Yeah, there's a there's a sewer on the property. Let me just zoom in a little bit. So we have a proposed sewer easement, sewer and drain easement connecting from the cul-de-sac to the east and then down um, to the sewer line that runs right through the, the kind of the, the narrow um, portion of the property from east to west. So we'll be connecting both lots into that sewer and uh, to the north of the sewer line is where the, uh, the stormwater system will go. And I'll show you that in a little more detail here. Okay, so here's the grading plan for lot one and two. Um, basically, the former house is right in the middle of what's going to be the, the cul-de-sac. Um, and then the lot one house um, outside of the buffer zone. Um, and then just a grading associated with lot one falls within that. Um, small area of outer buffer zone. Uh, there will be tree removal. Um, I was I was mistaken in my analysis. I had I had thought based on what I'd been told that the tree removals were negotiated with the planning board, but it's now my understanding from talking to Deb today that uh, the, the tree removal compensation through the planning board was just for removal of the street trees. So we have some homework to do in terms of, of locating uh, the diameter and species of the trees uh, that we're planning to remove or proposing to remove within the outer buffer zone and then coming up with compensation for those based on the the Conservation Commission's tree removal policy. So that'll be one of the things we plan to continue um, and to bring back to the commission. Um, I'm familiar with that policy. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll definitely be working on that. But toward, towards that effect, I mean, I did provide a habitat analysis as uh, discussed with Deb today on the site and documented in the analysis. Um, the understory um, areas within the buffers to be disturbed on both of these lots are dominated by non-native invasive species. 
um, such as Bittersweet, Lily of the Valley, um, Vinca Minor, um, Japanese Knotweed. It's pretty thick in the outer buffer zones on both lots. Um, the only valuable habitat features on either of these lots are the overstory trees. Um, those are mostly native, uh, mostly pines. There's some, some ash in there, um, but majority pines in the overstory. So those are the, those are the things we'll be looking at and, and coming back with a, um, with a compensatory uh, mitigation plan to offset that. Uh, loss of habitat in the overstory. Um, lot two, again, the house is entirely outside of the buffer zone, uh, even further outside of the buffer zone than, than lot one. Um, the off grading for the house is also outside of the buffer. The only work on lot two um, is associated with the um, stormwater system, the 100 foot buffer cuts through the, the stormwater system um, proposed uh, for the, the development that's, so that's located on lot two. Uh, so that's the work within the buffer zone on, uh, on lot two. Let's see. I guess that's, a, that's an overview of the project, I mean, clearly we're going to um, uh, request a continuation. We'll discuss um, the possibility of flagging, uh, putting flags up for Wetland A on 914 South Street. And we'll also look at the uh, the tree removals relative to the, the policy. We'll locate and speciate those trees, any of them over six inches in diameter and we'll uh, we'll come up with a, a mitigation plan um, for those species. I know in the policy, I, I mentioned this to Deb today in the policy, it discusses um, payment in lieu of replanting, but I believe Deb said that, that there's no system uh, for, for paying for, um, for tree loss, is that correct? Yeah, we we've never been able to make that work. Um, where we'll be actually removing it from our tree guideline policy because it never was something that we could accommodate. Okay, um, so so we'll be looking at tree tree and shrub replacement. <clears throat> um, yeah, I mean it's where the where the existing buffers are are fully wooded. Um, and we're only working in the outer buffers. I, it, I can say right now, it's going to be difficult to, um, you know, to do that amount of planting, uh, replacement planting within the buffers. I, I mean, we'll also, I think, need to look at maybe some plan adjustments that would that would reduce some of the tree clearing, um, because again, I think it's. It's going to be pretty difficult to find a place to, to put that many trees within the within the buffers. So um, that that's something we're going to need to work on. So that, and, and I assume that you will take into serious consideration what these letters referenced <clears throat> and like some of these very mature trees and, and labeling them and um, protecting them if if feasible. Right, that seems to be the primary concern of the abutters. So, so that's yeah another reason to to consider uh, you know <clears throat> minimization of the the trees to be removed. Correct. Um, so you're done. We have completed your presentation. Yes. Um, so, uh, commission members, I'll send it off to you guys. Um, Allison, do you have any comment at this stage? Just a couple. I mean, there may be some opportunity to have a few retaining walls near um, the house on lot one, near, you know, within the buffer. I know you don't want the trees right next to the house, but there may be one, you know, two or three, four trees that you might be able to save 
um, instead of just grading down, you could have a retaining wall. Um, I have a question that on, this isn't to do with our jurisdiction, but um, on lot two, you don't really have a, a way to, there's just the turnaround, which looks like it's for the fire truck, but there's no driveway that I can see. Is there a driveway that goes to the house in lot two from the turnaround? Yeah, there is a driveway. I'm not sure why it's not actually on that plan. It's but not showing up, right? Oh, maybe it was. Maybe it was. It, it wasn't. Is it down in the lower portion? It's on. Because a, it's not. I mean, maybe it, maybe it wasn't. Um, it didn't plot. You know, it was on a no plot layer or something. But it's yeah, it's like not it must there. not have. It, it, it's to the yeah. if you're coming straight up the uh, cul-de-sac, it would be at the about like ten o'clock. Oh, okay. Okay, so, yeah, it's just not showing up, which is weird. Yeah, I mean, I, I couldn't figure out what you're going to walk across a lot of lawn and take your groceries. <laughs> um, and then, and is this turnaround just, I mean, is this the only way that they'll yeah. accept the subdiv? It's just horrible. The fire Like the main, the main attraction in this whole place is the turnaround. Right. I know. It's, it's really ugly. There, right? you pl you're planting that Yeah, but you could, you. Yes. Yeah, but I don't know. It's not. It's gonna look. It's not. It's not gonna be nice. I'm sorry, but it's just not. But never mind. That's not. That's not for me to say. So the other, only other things I say that this again not really our jurisdiction, except maybe down at the lower right, is that you have a swale that goes down, 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 and it and it, it sort of like just kind of dumps into, you know, that's right on the property line. Are you dumps into are the you talking on lot two upper zone? Yeah, yeah, down down here. Too. Yep. yeah, down, 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 yeah, down, so down. And then you're the also request, that was at the request of the neighbor. We had several revisions um because he was concerned about the privacy. So what we agreed on that was um satisfactory to him was to put that planting strip and a swale as like an extra level of protection um for any runoff to, to get to his property. So that was but at you're cutting down that. those trees to do that that swale. You could do it without killing the trees, I think. Right, and that's what we're looking at. But then he was worried about runoff, yeah. and drainage, and so no, you could you could still swale it somehow. I mean, I think you probably could could figure out a way to do it without killing one, two, three, four. Well, the five, trees six, seven, aren't eight. accurate on here, Allison. There's a lot more. Oh, trees really? That are oh, shows. oh, okay. Never mind. All right, and 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 the neighbor doesn't mind uh, up or by the by the near the entrance. All that that water going down. That's that it's going the other slope. way. It's, it's actually going on the property. So they said, Oh, it's going down. Property. Okay. 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 Yeah. Never mind. Okay. Okay. So, okay. Fine. Yeah, that's, that's. Um, Sue, you have anything to add? Yeah. I'm just, I just want to confirm that the infiltration system is there going to be one for both lots? And it there's sounds two. like two. Yeah. There's two. There's one in the, uh, you can't see my mouse, can you? Um, there's one in the rear. Art, do you have those plans on this presentation? The utility plans? Yeah, that show the yep. integration. Yep. Yep. So there's there. one here, and then there's one in the in the front of lot one as well. Oh, they're all subsurface. For for the for the street. Yeah, they're all below ground. Right? Yep. Yeah, it's, it's fine. <laughs> uh, Sue, anything more? No, I see. I see. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's um, yeah. Well, we'll look at the calculations um to confirm whatever it might be going towards the wetland. Uh, but it just seems like you have all this land. Why have an expensive subsurface system? But um, that's. I mean, we're, we're certainly open to other options. I mean, this was what was proposed to us um, by the engineers, so we can certainly. Yeah, well, only I, it just it, it's expensive when you have all that land, you could have right. a surface basin and it would be easier to maintain and be a lot cheaper. You know, it's a lot cheaper to have an excavator dig a large depression that's planted than to put in a lot of stone and chambers. But. Right, and that's certainly something that we can revisit as well. And maybe they don't, you know, maybe there's not enough room or, or something. Um, we're, we're not here to re-engineer your plan. We're just here to protect our wetlands. Um, Dave? Oh, uh, yeah, I just have one comment. The note that the, uh, the tree guidance says uh, 
that the mitigation would be uh, one and a half inch trees, but I think the commission mm -hmm. wants to see something on the neighborhood of two to two and a half inches. And, and that's something I think that we're in the process of revising. So just note that. We need to get to that revised. Yeah, we are looking for larger than one and a half inch caliper trees when you do your mitigation. Um, and, and the more you protect, particularly the mature, large mature trees that are, your butters have commented on, uh, the less trees you have to plant. So, um, Paulina. I don't have any questions. Does the commission think that we should do a site visit to get a sense of these trees and um, the area within our buffer zone? I, I would suggest maybe after we get the trees located and speciated. Yeah, that would help a lot, actually. You're right. Um, at the moment, though, like there's no house there. Nobody lives there. If we happen to drive by, it would be fine. Yep. Yeah. You obviously we filed the, that that gives you permission to to go to the site. So yeah, it would be certainly easier to look at it with um, any of the trees located. So that would be helpful. Um, and the wetland in the back is flagged, correct? That, yeah, the one on site, the B series wetland is flagged. Yep. Um, is there any buddy in the audience that would like to ask? Uh, there are two hands raised. Uh, I'll let the first hand over. We have Reg Foster. Okay. Ryan Suter on defense of the state made by their captain, Jamie Ben in game three. So it's not the kids that have been. Reg, we can see you. Um, if you want to unmute yourself, you have the floor. Thanks. If they're to move on from the Stanley Cup flyer. Somebody's. Um, there we go. Shut off there their microphone because I'm getting background noise. I don't know who that might be coming from. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes, we can. Yep. You Great. you have the floor. Um, I just wanted to let um, the commission know that uh, my wife, Barbie and I, who is with me, but you can't see her, uh, are the owners of 898 South Street, which is and a butter of the property across the pipe stand driveway of 914 to the east. And, uh, and all of, of the marsh to the east that you were discussing is actually on our property, not on the property of 914, uh, the way <laughs> the lots are configured, uh, just for your information. So the wetland that we were talking about on your property? Yes. So is that the wetland that you already delineated when you came to us a number of years ago? Yes, and thank you. That is my next point, uh, <laughs> which is as the uh, Conservation Commission knows, uh, five years ago, we embarked on a, uh, a very extensive and expensive <laughs> uh, process of restoring that wetland uh, by removing all the invasive species via hand weeding, uh, which was um, considerable, and, and restoring uh, with native species that entire wetland. Uh, so obviously we're interested in the discussion tonight. And, um, and uh, we uh, want to say that uh, the um, discussion of the trees um, spoke to, uh, you know, uh, forget the name of the species, uh, the complicated one you couldn't pronounce the name. Uh, but, Sarah. Yes, Yes, um, but there are extremely large and mature white pines, which are considered sort of an ordinary boring species uh, at the front of the lot and on the side of the lot, our side of the lot. Uh, they're huge. Uh, I, I know uh, for a fact that they're over 100 years old. And, um, and uh, you know, while they might not be as fancy as the other um, species that was mentioned, they're, I, I think, worth uh, considering in this development plan. Um, uh, I want to also say, you know, we definitely support the applicant's desire to redevelop this property. Um, so we're not here to kind of throw roadblocks into it or anything like that. More, we're very interested in having it uh, redeveloped in, in a way that's consistent 
with the uh, amazing uh, topography and uh, uh, vegetation and natural beauty of that part of town, which is the last part of town that is left in that condition, that Western part of town that we happen to uh, inhabit. Um, uh, um, there was a question earlier about possibly discussing um, the project uh, with the owners of the abutter wetlands, which is not the Bob Place and Erna Place, but it's actually ourselves. We are absolutely open to doing that. Um, and uh, both to the applicant and to the staff and to the commission. Thank you. Uh, and, uh, Thank you. And, and then um, the, um, um, there was a final comment there that I made a last minute note here uh, where um, Janet, um, Chair Bernardo, you were um, wondering whether it would be a good idea for the commission to schedule a, a site visit. Uh, site visit? Property. Yes. And I would absolutely encourage that just the way you did with our property, because it, it you know, the plans that you have received, while they're totally accurate, I have nothing, no, uh, uh, there's nothing about them that I can see that are, are, are inaccurate. Uh, you can only fully appreciate the nature of the site and the property if you actually walk the meets and bounds of the property all the way down to the Charles River. So I would certainly vote my whatever vote I get that you, you do that because I think it would really inform you as to what you're considering on this property. So that's all I, I have to say. Thank you very much. Thanks. And um, the Pine trees you're talking about, are they within the like 50 feet of South Street, you think? Um, I, you know, I had a bit of analysis done by my uh, uh, wetlands and my uh, landscape consultants that you're familiar with that we used over this process um, over the last five years. And I think some of them are, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, so, um, you know, I do have a, a plan that he gave me that sort of indicated uh, based on the, what the uh, applicants have submitted to you uh, might need to be cut down by the, now well, for the, for the de development of the front lot. Um, you know, we didn't look at the rear lot because uh, that's really not adjacent to our property. That's more of, of interest and concern to the, to the Bob and Erna place. Reg, so I can they, give you, they do show a 50 foot no disturb zone between the edge of South Street and the inside. Oh, the planning area. department, there's a 35 foot no disturb. They're proposing to remove two shade trees. And since it's a scenic way, they had to go through um, planning. And that's where the $400 going to Eddie's fund came from. Oh, so, but it says 50 feet on this plan. It does say 50, but I, she said 35 is required. I, I don't have a comment on that one way or the other. As you know, from our previous interactions, uh, our family, Barbie and I, we love trees and we look to preserve them even if they're not within the scenic road easement um, boundaries here. Reg, uh, one one more right. question. I'm sorry, one more question before I leave, Reg. Um, how do we know where the property line is so that we know that that wetlands are on your property? Um, I can, um, it isn't shown on the plan submitted by the proponent or the applicant as, I, as the ones I've looked at anyway, but um, it does show a twisty, narrow access driveway um, to the uh, 920 South Street um, property. And our boundary is just to the east of that twisty road. So there's maybe five or 10 or 15 feet, um, uh, you know, depending where you measure it to the east. Um, and then the marsh that, that is within the area of overs oversight of the Conservation Commission, that's all on our property. So you give permission for them to flag it? I guess I do. Yeah, and the and the surveyor knows where those property lines are. I mean, like I say, he, you know, he I work with him and he actually took shots on that wetland. So he knows 
he, he knows exactly where that is. I actually think there's a couple of stakes that are there that got taken, put in while you were doing your work earlier, and that's fine. That, that is a good thing to do. We don't have no, any objection to that. Thank you. Okay, anything else for this for Red's discussion? Um, there's an, somebody else. Oh, Brian, did you have something? I was going to say to Reg, uh, happy to share my number with you and meet you over there and walk some of this stuff too as well. Um, it's certainly our intention to preserve what we can because privacy obviously is, is important to us as well. Um, so I'm happy to, to meet up with you and, and take a look through this. The Conservation Commission has my number, but I th don't think I'll tell you in open public meeting right now, if you don't mind. Okay. Um, thank you. Okay, is there somebody else that still has their hand up? Yep, there's one more hand. I'll move them over. They're listed as Sergey. Oh, that's such a nice letter. Sergey, you, um, when you want to unmute yourself, you have the floor. We don't hear you, so you may have not unmuted yourself. Oh, okay. yeah. Now. Yes, now. Good. And I do not have pictures, so sorry about it. I don't know how to. Not a worry. That's fine. Yeah, it's actually uh, good evening, and thank you very much for letting me speak. Uh, not much I can add uh, to the previous owners. Uh, they practically covered many things. Uh, what I wanted to mention uh, that I did participate in all uh, planning board hearings for subdivision of this property, and I did support the development, and uh, I did work with uh, Brian Conaton uh, how to uh, revise the plans, and I'm grateful for this. <clears throat> I didn't hear uh, that Mr. Allen uh, said anything about points I raised uh, in my letter to you, uh, to the commission. Uh, and I hope uh, in his further work, uh, he will um, kind of will address uh, the points uh, to this. And uh, as I said, not much I can add uh, to what the other owners said, uh, but uh, this vegetation and preservation as many trees as it is possible is important because it's a really beautiful area. And uh, removing all the trees completely uh, as uh, owner from 914, South Street pointed out will create basically a wide view uh, kind of open space. Uh, that's basically what I wanted uh, to mention. And one request I have for the applicant, if it's possible, because I did receive uh, notice about filing from this past Friday and uh, was able to obtain plans uh, thanks to Clay. I believe it was either Monday evening or Tuesday morning. And they simply didn't have enough time to more thoroughly review the plans. So if it's possible, uh, I would like that Mr. Allen or applicants submit uh, the plan to the abutters at least a little bit ahead, if it's possible. This is my comment. Great, thank you very much. And um, yes, and we did re um, receive your letter, and I believe that you know that would be our request for the applicant to address your comments about the wildlife habitat when they are also looking at the trees. Yeah, we just need to follow the, the need and bylaws. That's yes. it. I do not ask for more. Thank you very yes. much. Thank you. And um, Deborah Clay, is there the, this application is falls under the need and bylaw as well as the Wildlife Protection Act, correct? Correct. Um, I did mention that I thought a um, more substantial wildlife habitat assessment was probably going to be um, necessary. Um, I suggested having an arborist go out and, you know, look at the trees, determine their health, um, species, size, and, um, you know, there, there are certain parts of the wildlife habitat um, analysis from the um, DEP forms that, you know, would probably be helpful. Great. That makes sense to you? Brian and Arthur. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, I know it, it's basically going to say that the important features are the trees, which you know is what we're discussing. But I can go into a little more detail to to get there. Yeah, just as far as you know, unique features, any cavities, um, you know, what wildlife you see out there, what could potentially be using the habitat. 
just that type of thing. Right, right. Great. Um, any commission members have anything else to add at this stage? Um, we we'll want to be doing a more thorough review on your stormwater design. Um, I hadn't gotten a chance to totally look at those calculations yet. They meet the mass, they meet the stormwater standards. Or did you, is there is there calculations in a book someplace? Yeah, they all the calculations were submitted under lot two because that's where the stormwater. Uh, main okay. system falls, but yeah, those are the calculations. Okay. Did, did you meet the standards? Is that what the calculations are going to show when I finally open them up? Uh, I believe so. That wasn't my design. It was through Vern Porter's office, but okay. I believe he's met the DEP standards. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay. Anybody in the commission have anything else to add, or are we ready to continue this? Do you want to plan to be back on? Um, June 8th. And yeah, that, that, that makes sense to at least have an update and we may be ready to schedule a site walk at that point. So okay. Um, that sounds we good. Don't yeah. have some homework to do. We can't hear you, Brian, if you're talking, you're on mute. Vern Porter. Um he just had his hand up there. I think we might have just lost him. Oh, he's here. Oh, okay. Here he is. Hello, Vern Porter, you. how are you? Very well, thank you. Vern Porter, 354 Alley Street, Newton Mass. Um, I just wanted to let you know, we, you know, we did prepare drainage calculations and they do, you know, meet the standards and they have been approved by the planning board. We, you know, we're fully approved by planning board and we went through all the process with the town engineer. And um, so, yes, it, it, everything is compliant. Great. Um, hey, Vern, just, just quickly, just quickly, Vern, did you hear the question they were asking why all of the stormwater is underground? Just out of curiosity. It was it was just so that we could use the land. I mean, the, the home, you know, the developer wanted not to have big holes and and maintenance and ponds and mosquitoes and um, oh, infiltration and basins don't cause mosquitoes. You know better than that. Sure, they do. <laughs> <laughs> not an, not so an infiltrate. So, it, it was like, just so we could have it and be make the land so it's still usable. All right, that's fine. Um, Okay, thank you. There is room to plant trees. You know, they were talking about planting trees. We could plant trees on the other side of Wetland B down towards the river. There's plenty of room down there to plant trees if we needed to. There's a big giant field between Wetland B and the uh, the river. So it's uh, there's lots of room down there to plant if we needed to. Great. Um, I, and, but I, I'm, I think that's great and helpful. Um, keeping in mind that the abutters do want to have that privacy, so please appreciate their request as well. Yep, well, we worked with them to do as best we could, and that's why we kept the sewer easement along the east side. Um, it's 15 feet away from the property line, so that we don't disturb any trees that are right there, and then we can always add to that. And then on the other side, we we did put a mound in swale. So the mound is like a planting area and the swale is just to keep the water from going on to Mr. Sergey's property. Um, so I think that's do all. You, do you think that there's opportunity to create the mound and the swale without cutting down all of the trees along that property line on that side? Or once you start think, making the mound and the swale, you the trees have to no, go? The, the, the mound and swale over there, the first 10 feet, we're not really changing the grade. We're only raising the grade a foot. So yep. yeah, all the trees within that first 10 feet could stay. And there's no reason they have to come down. It's we're only changing the grade a foot. So good. Good not, answer. That's not even within our jurisdiction, but we like it anyway. <laughs> um well, that's what our plan was. Great. Thank you. Um sure. anybody else? Anybody else in the audience? Any commission members have anything more to add? Just sorry, one quick question for the two for one replacement. So that's for every tree that's removed within the buffer zone? Within the or, buffer zone. So am I, cause there's certainly gonna be a lot of plantings after and landscaping and you know, maybe 
the best use for that, if we can't fit them all on the buffer, is to put them along the property lines to to give the neighbors um, more privacy and in screening. Is that an option? Well, I think it's definitely a, an option for your neighbors, but from the Conservation Commission, you need to, any trees that come out of the buffer zone need to go back into the buffer okay, zone. Okay, understood. But I do think that planting trees for your neighbors for privacy would be appreciated. Sure. By the neighbors. Um, we're, that's just not in our jurisdiction, so we can't require. Understood. Um, okay, anybody else? Can I have a motion to continue 920 South Street, Lot 1 and Lot 2, DP file number 234905 and DP file number 234904 to June 8th? Same one. Second. A second. <laughs> All in favor? Um, Allison? Aye. Two. Aye. Dave. Aye. Paulina. Janet. Aye. Great. Continued. Thank you very much. Appreciate uh, your time. Thank okay. you. Thank you. And um, Reg Foster is still here, right? Because he is going to do, give us a brief discussion on the Linden Chambers Redevelopment Project. And their other business. I am here. Uh, so putting um, on my hat uh, as the chair of the Needham Housing Authority, um, you would, I think it's been in your packet, uh, there was a very minimalist update uh, that we discussed with uh, Chair Bernardo and, and staff uh, for this meeting tonight, given the large number of other agenda items that were scheduled at the time a week or two ago. And just two slides. Um, the reason they're there is that um, by at the end of this month, we will have completed the conceptual design, uh, all 300 pages of it, um, and, um, and we will be embarking on a listening and uh, Q&A uh, and uh, input guiding um, set of meetings uh, next month. Um, there was a reason of, uh, that uh, it was sort of urgent to kind of get the uh, Conservation Commission sort of 10-minute uh, view of um, how we were going, which was, and uh, I was given strict instructions to net, make it not look more than three slides long because of, I guess, some multi-hour meetings that you've been having in the last month or month and a half here. Um, and um, when it looked like it might be another multi-hour meeting uh, tonight, um, I uh, reached out to Car Chair Bernardo and said that that urgent reason has actually changed as of yesterday morning. And uh, we actually have the ability to uh, uh, sometime in June when it's uh, convenient for the uh, Conservation Commission's agenda to um, uh, have a more um, uh, uh, pre uh, prolonged and more informed presentation of this conceptual design, um, including making that all of those 300 pages available to any of, of the commission members who are feeling strong and looking for maybe something to help them fall asleep at night, but maybe not. It's an important um, uh, project for Needham, as we all know. Um, and uh, besides just sort of the minimalist uh, information that's uh, presented on the um, two slides that you received, um, there's a lot more that's been planned in the, in the uh, conceptual design of the landscape plan. plan. Uh, trees uh, obviously are very important to all of us and what we're doing to both preserve as many trees as we can and also replace those which inevitably have to go as a result of the development, proposed development. Um, there's issues with respect to stormwater runoff that we've encountered during the conceptual design period. I'm not gonna uh, get into any detail tonight um, because I don't have my experts with me tonight, um, but um, we encountered that when we had a number of neighborhood meetings um, 
that you know, that was kind of a surprise to us, but needs to be addressed by not only ourselves but the town. Um, and um, there's also um, a plan that we have to uh, restore the beleaguered marsh that's on the property, about a one acre marsh that's on the property, um, and and make it not just something that um, um, serves the purposes of the wetland uh, uh, act, but also is a, a tremendous amenity for our elderly residents uh, at these deep, deeply affordable housing complex um, that they can enjoy in you know between the spring and the fall walking areas and so forth. So um, uh, just speaking to the chair this morning, I said, you know, probably it would be a better idea um, not to jam ourselves onto the tonight's meeting. And when you have time to schedule a more ample amount of time to sort of uh, go through um, what we're proposing. And again, we're uh, at the conceptual design stage, moving into the um, schematic design stage. So this is an ideal time to receive your, your, your comments and guidance and input on how we can really make this an absolutely first rate redevelopment um, project in the town of Needham. Great. Thank you, Reg. Um, Deb, did you send or can you send the slides that um, Reg Foster has sent to us Yesterday, can you send it to the commission members so that everybody can kind of understand? But we just got slides yesterday. Yeah, I think I think we got them a few yesterday. days ago. A couple okay. of days ago. Clay, did I not give them to you to put up, or did we? Because it's a very informal conversation. So, um, is that, yeah, can we put them in our Dropbox? Janet, if I may. Um, you can slide, send out the slides, um, but basically what they show is the four condition and all of the building footprint that's within the 50 foot zone and the 25 foot zone, uh, which is somewhat considerable with our pre-existing non-conforming situation. You know, this, these uh, buildings are built in the 60s um, and early 70s. And then the after slide, uh, shows the calculations of how we've been able to, uh, it's a jigsaw puzzle and the team has done an amazing job of pulling back from, you know, nothing is within the 25% zone, uh, foot zone, and most everything is, uh, you know, pulled back behind the 50 foot zone. And, and there's a bit of gymnastics and contortions in the buildings that they are proposing uh, but it, it's a, a tremendous improvement over what we have as a pre-existing condition. Great, and I just forward them as well to Clay. So oh, thank I'm, you. I'm in the middle of sending them to everybody. Oh, good. I just sent them to Clay because it's all I could handle. <laughs> <laughs> it was tricky trying to figure out where my send button was. Um, great. Well, thank you. We really appreciate that um, and appreciate trying to reduce our um, meeting time for this evening. So um, we will be talking to you again soon. Great. So good really luck with that project. That's, that's, it's a great project. So it's just a matter of making sure that we're all on the same page. Exactly. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank have you. Bye-bye. Nice um, okay, so we have a couple of... We just have the one that closed, 32 Elder, and you also sent something. Else. Yeah, so we have to issue the reservoir sediment removal. 470 order. Dedham Avenue. Oh, okay. Have there been things we're supposed to be signing? Because I haven't been in to sign anything. I'm going to print out some things in the morning. Okay. Um, I sign them on Tuesday when I get there. That would be helpful. Sure, you can sign them on Tuesday, but I'll send out an email tomorrow. Um, okay, so we have Dedham Ave is the sediment removal and remediation within the Needham Reservoir. Does everybody have this um, Exhibit A for DP file number 234902? It's a very long Exhibit A. Oh, it's very long. 
because it has so many different impacts and stuff. Yeah, it's just in a lot of different resource areas. Uh, so I Are put together any... kind of a table to show. Yeah, the table is great. That helps. Um, and so you've got all these numbers um, as the applicant has kind of given us and we've checked them. And is there anything that we really want to discuss that you were questioning? Um, I don't think so. I mean, I put in some special conditions that we can go over, but the findings of fact are pretty um, self-explanatory, I guess. So the highlighted ones, should we be paying more attention to or is that yeah, just additional? Yeah. Um, so most of them are the usual. Um, so I kind of went off the Rosemary dredging project. Oh yeah, good. You know, to try to look at their special conditions. Um, so the first one, the order conditions shall be included in any bid documents for this project. Yeah, so that's, that's good. Reasonable. Um, the applicant shall submit copies of the Section 401 Water Quality Cert and Section 404 U.S. Army Corps of Engineer approvals prior to the start of work. So they did have in the application that they did apply for those. So I'm just saying that we need to have copies of them. Yep, good. Um, they also mentioned that they were going to be putting together a water control plan prior yep. to the start of work. So we're asking for a copy of that. Um, so do we need to say um, she'll submit for approval like from the Conservation Commission or is that obvious because it's our order of condition? It's up to you. Like, does it, that was the we don't want them to just say approval from anybody. We want it to be from us, right? Okay. But but I, I don't know if I'm just being. Um, no, it's fine. Okay. I can add that. Okay, um, then 12, prior to the start of dewatering activities, the applicant shall document the existing conditions of sediment deposition with photographic documentation at no less than three locations within Alder Brook, um, basically just to see if any of the sediment is washing down on the brook. During Good, yeah. Um, and then they had mentioned that they were going to, um, to protect trees that they weren't gonna be removing. So um, I asked them to put the orange construction fencing around yep. the drip line of the trees to protect those. Um, 14 is they should have an environmental monitor um, on site during the work um, to monitor compliance with the order. Um, they should also have a wildlife specialist um, you know, who's kind of in charge. Of yeah, it. so what's going to happen to like the turtles and stuff that aren't? Well, so since they're them. only removing water from that section, then they should be looking for critters within the work area that they can just put over. Right, so that's, they, some, they'll, they'll be an environmental monitor to that's the wildlife, wildlife specialist. specialist. The wildlife specialist will be there. So when they start scooping out the sediment, they see anything, they're going to be able to pull it out. Is that how that works? Yeah. Just once they cordon that area off, they should be able to see if there's anything in there. And Clay and I will be out there in our conservation canoe, canoe and we'll be in your, in your musk boots because they're going to be getting all, rid of all the water. We'll be on the other side. <laughs> Um, so we have that 19, um, so basically just our meeting on site. So we'd like to meet with the environmental monitor and wildlife person when we go over the order as well. Wait, you just said 19? I'm sorry, 17. Are we, are we asking for the full-time uh, monitor? Are we asking for what? A full-time monitor. Um, I, I don't necessarily think it works that way, um, but I think in between, and usually they they do train people that are on site doing the work of how to move the animals if they find them. So I can add that. Yeah. <clears throat> well, because they thing. should be there, like when the water is, they'll pump the water out, they'll put yeah. it in the fence, they'll pump yeah. the water out. Yeah, they should definitely be there then. 
Yeah. And then they should like be able to look through the sediment. However, if they look through the sediment and uh -huh. any visible animal, any turtles or whatnot, right. get moved to the other side. Yep. Um, Aren't you saying, you know, the monitor sh should be on site during, uh, you know, key construction activities or something of that nature? Yeah, I can add more to that. Um, uh, okay. Um, I wasn't at that meeting where this, they went over this. Did they say how long that this project was going to take? Does anyone remember? It was order of a few months. It wasn't that long. Yeah, it was a few months. It was a few months. Yeah. Okay. Um, then number 20, all dredge spoils and other man-made debris to remove from the site shall be disposed of in compliance with applicable, applicable regulations. And post construction, the certificate of compliance. So, do we want the bathymetric grades of the of the reservoir grading restoration activities? So, they said that they would be removing up to five feet of sediment in some places. So, do we want to require that? Um. I don't know. Do do we want to require that? Because I feel like in my mind, the excavation is, you know, that's the impact. So once they removed whatever sediment they removed, whether it's four feet or five feet. It is what it is, right? It is what it is, right. It is kind of, but I would almost think that somebody from the town that's paying for this dredging operation, they're going to want to know. Do you want me to ask Tom Ryder? Yeah, see if he wants. If he if he cares, uh, and maybe he's already asked for it. Well, I, he, I don't know that he put uh, that in it. He put that in his specification if he if he wanted it, right? I would think that he maybe, yeah, he might have or he might have. You know, I don't know if he did or not. Well, so, I'll talk I'm, to him. And yeah, be, I'm trying. I, I can't trust. Like we definitely care when it's like a surface grading area and what's happening, but underneath the water, I don't know. I don't. I don't know that we care. Does anybody, Helena, you have an opinion on that? So, how it could. What so, are they proposing any vegetation in the reservoir itself after, like along the? edge or anything that they, they are replanting things around the edge are they there's i think i think there's a whole planting yeah I, I knew about in the bbw and and such i didn't know if the actual reservoir they were doing any of that and oh, i think of that as bbw that's not bbw on the edge of the reservoir the bank yeah uh, yeah no not that isn't bbw <coughs> well is there plants though that we want to make sure we're monitoring and so that there's a monitoring thing? Two year monitoring? I would I would think that would be a good idea. So I'll add that at the end. Okay. We don't need anything more from you know an engineer that's doing anything i don't i don't think so they already gave us everything all right yeah, was pretty anything, anybody else anything to add? <clears throat> uh so i'll take a motion to uh oh. issue also huh? sorry um so they did request a waiver for work within the 25 foot notice serve zone well for work within resource areas and the 25 foot okay so, so we have to do those first Waivers um, first. Yeah, do waivers first, and they're exempt, I would assume, from our waiver fee as well. So you yeah. won't have to vote for that. Okay. So um, can I have a motion to grant a waiver for work within the resource area? And can we do the both and work? Yeah, resource areas, areas and, and within the buffer zone. 25 foot buffer. Yeah. Take a motion. So moved. I have a second. A second. All in favor, Allison. 
Uh, Sue. Aye. Dave. Aye. Paulina. Janet. Aye. Um, okay, so then can I have a motion to issue the order of conditions as amended? I move we issue the order of conditions as amended. Second. All in favor? Allison. Sue. Aye. Dave. Aye. Paulina. Aye. Janet. Aye. Great. Okay, that's that one. Thank you very much. Now we can move on to 36 Elder Road. Exhibit A. DP file number. Two three four eight nine nine, and I did look at this one before, and I don't think I had any. Oh yeah, what? I remember you crossed off all this because now we are in agreement that they are meeting the riverfront area. Uh, yeah. Let me just. I'll share the screen here. The the finding of facts that's highlighted and and crossed out. This is outdated. Um, stock information that we'd use for riverfront projects that were approved and it, it referenced 1058 uh, subsection 4 which is the untouched the non-redevelopment riverfront area and after going through the workshops and, and giving more scrutiny to these riverfront projects these are actually um, redevelopment projects so I'm coming up I'm currently in the process of recreating a stock language with the applicable sub sub bullet points that that apply to uh, redevelopment. I didn't have that language here for the draft, but I crossed that out because technically it's it's not 1058.4, which I have crossed out. I need to just go through the findings of facts that you did find that they met the mitigation for the overage of the 10% of existing degraded, et cetera. Okay, so that's, that's 1058.5. Yeah. Yeah, or something like that. Exactly. So that's the only reason that that's I left it in there just to show that we were still going to reference the riverfront standards and how they met it and that that your findings ah. would be there. It's just that the language has right. to be a little bit more careful than what what we've had in the past. Okay, well, I'm glad you went to that workshop. <laughs> yeah, Deb was with me for a, an extended version of it this last last Monday. So, so how long was this workshop? The second it one was, was two Mondays. Hour. Yeah, it was yeah. two Mondays for an hour and a half each. It wasn't all day. That's good. Uh, um, I highlighted okay. the, the infiltration system test pit red because they did provide the test pit information with the application. So this will be omitted as one of our stock ones. They already did the test pit. Right. And, uh, I referenced. Oh, sorry. What was that? Sorry, I was just wondering if either you or Deb could sometime when we have a really light agenda, um, just go through what you learned in the workshop, kind of summarize it for us, if that's okay. Sure, yeah. they even they shared the um, the presentation with us. Oh, that's okay, great. So you have a copy so, of it. Okay. Yeah. So, um, you know, happy to forward it to you guys, and then you have it for discussion at some point. Thank you. Yeah, that's great. And I'm hoping with the language that we will be. Uh, that I'll be making for the order of conditions. I'm hoping to come up with a little bit more streamlined kind of bullet point or, or I, they, they provided us with a worksheet for review, but I think that it's still pretty clunky. Um, so I, I would love to come up with something I could give you guys and also use here in house among staff just to, to be able to go through those sub bullet points and, and knock things out in a more layman's term way. Yeah, well, even like the areas, the 10% piece, which is what I may not understand it exactly right, but what I heard was take the riverfront area, multiply it by 10%, what's degraded, and the degraded is houses, rooftops, actual impervious area. It's also earth that's it has no topsoil on it, I think, but um, most of these lawn, our lawn, so they don't count. Um, but I thought it was interesting that Susan thought to remove the river and thinking that that was going to somehow benefit her design, which I was confused about. Um, but I, but is there like, can you remove the river? <laughs> I mean, does that 
I was like, hmm, do we rip? like if the Charles River is a pretty wide river. It doesn't make any sense to do that. And I think it would only be a benefit to have more riverfront area on yeah. your side. So it's if like your a project your property is half the Charles River, half the Charles River is in on your property, you count to the middle of the, you know, to your property line, which could be the middle of the river or the whole the whole river as part of your riverfront area. Yeah, or I is guess. it really just the border, that main high water line, two hundred feet, and that's the that's the area that it does make more sense if that's the area. Well, that is the area. Yeah, and so you wouldn't count the actual river. But I don't know why right why you would get rid of it though. What yeah, well, I should, I mean, I think we weren't going to tell her to get rid of it, but if if the bank. If the property line wasn't on both sides and it ended at the river, we would have just taken the whole, you know, that 200 feet. So I. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't think it made sense, but. Yeah. You just thinking about that in the future when we have a, you know, larger river that maybe somebody wants, uh, why would they? No, because maybe we don't want them to take care of. I think these are really good thought experiments when we actually dip into the, you know, breaking down the regulations. I think that this is exactly the type of hypothetical that that we can be trying to contextualize when we when we go through. Yeah. You know, but to be checklist. able to be like, OK, you have this much impervious area. This is this percentage. You can go up to, you know, you can go up to 10 percent. And if you go over 10 percent, you have to come up with your area and then multiply that by two. And that's your what you mitigate, that's what you did, right? That was where the 270. And they also have to meet the other standards of not being closer. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. Type of thing. That's the one I always kind of knew. It was like, okay, you can't get any closer, but this 10%, I wasn't really paying attention to, I guess. Mm -hmm. So that 5,000 square feet or 10% is only on new. Oh. Uh, so okay. redevelopment, it's just the 10%. There isn't a 5,000 square feet option. Okay. And that's a definite. Yeah. Okay. Good. Good to know. Sorry, did we interrupt? So we have planting work. Is that where we're up to? Yeah. So I, I put in the condition with the planting schedule that they have two, two trees, 12 shrubs, and at least nine herbaceous plugs, uh, and that they should be native non-cultivar species. I included four permanent markers since they have the fence line that will be delineating that, um, that back restoration area. So I did also just include the sentence, the approved fence may serve as holders for the placards so that the, the, monu the, the placards can go on that rather than hidden little markers. Yep. Um, two year monitoring, and then with the subsurface uses, uh, units, making sure that when they go to submit, they also have the uh, signed operation and maintenance plan by the property owner with their Perfect. certificate of compliance. Great. I think that's helpful. I'm finding more and more people, that, you know, are like, I didn't know that I had something on my property. All right. Any other comments or questions about this? Um, if we are ready, I will take a motion to approve the order of conditions for DP file number 234899 as amended. So moved. One second. All in favor? Allison. Aye. Sue. Aye. Dave. Aye. Paulina. Yeah, aye. Great. Um, that's that. Anything else that we need to cover tonight? Uh, I don't think so. So I just forwarded um, the riverfront information to you guys. Oh, good. Oh, good. That's helpful. Um, and we've had a lot of late meetings, so I think we should call it a day. But um, I would love to get the tree thing going, but we have had too many late meetings. So, so one of these days, 
we'll be here and talk about it. Yeah, we don't have enough people anyway. All right, so if we're good, I will. So anybody want to join me on um, Tuesday? Dave, any chance I can convince you to join me on Tuesday? Or uh, Sue? Yeah. Or Elvin? I could come. So our, our building's open till 6.30 on Tuesdays with summer hours. So um, I'll be here. We Great. can meet at the table here. I, I have had various area values and sketches and trying to figure out their numbers and I, I, I couldn't. And then they changed one of them. They made their porch smaller. Uh, really <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> All right. So I'll take a motion to adjourn. I move we adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye, 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 aye. All right. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a good night. Thanks. Good night. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.